I didn't really expect to be up there. And uh, when I did, it was, a, it was a great feeling. And I just keep, you know, um, developing new goals and I keep achieving them. So that's a great feeling. It's got to be cool, though. Coming off a win, it's got to breed, you know, confidence for him, though, don't you think? Absolutely. You know, but with that comes the pressure. Now that he knows he can do it, there's a little bit more pressure to do it again. And this kid, pressure? Ryan Villapoto, he's been in the shadows of Mike Alessi his whole life, and now he gets to race his first national, and I think you know, he doesn't really know what to expect. I don't know if he feels that much pressure or not. Making that transition from amateur to pros, Aaron has it. Well, we have a fresh new face here this weekend racing at Broom Tioga Raceway, and he's known as one of the fastest amateurs never to have won a title at Loretta Lynn's, but finally he was able to do so just a couple of weeks ago. Ryan, congratulations first off on winning your title, and this is your big debut here this weekend. You didn't really have a chance to even enjoy your win. Yeah, you know, I, I've been racing for Loretta's for like seven years, and, uh, you know, I just wanted to leave uh, leave the amateur ranks to having a title at Loretta. I never had one, and, you know, I finally did it the last time, so... You know, it kind of feels good leaving amateurs with a Loretta title. Hey, just this team alone has had a spectacular season so far. Just last weekend, three top ten finished riders. You got high expectations riding on your shoulders. Yeah, you know, I just want to go out there for sure to do, do uh, get the best start I can, and then uh, hopefully finish in the top ten. If I can do that, uh, I think you know everything will just you know, it'll just be, make it a lot easier on me if I get a good start. Well, he's certainly got enough horsepower to get the start. I mean, the, the Monster Pro Circuit bike, certainly not hurt for horsepower, and, and uh, you know, it's nice to get on a motorcycle that you have a lot of confidence in. So, and he's small, too. So if he nails that first 10 feet out of the gate, delivers the power properly, he should be in the top 5 or 10 for both models. How young does he look, though? I mean, uh, he as well as Michael Lassie, I mean, he looks so young. Then you had this uh, rough established veteran of Ivan Tedesco. This is practice in Saturday. Look at the wood chips. I mean, we've talked about it before. I, I think this even plays in Villapoto's hands even better because, I mean, that reminds me of Loretta Lynn. I mean, you got the wood chips down, you diss the start, you see the lap times, and Andrew Short is the fastest uh, so far coming into the day. Well, obviously help. Now, this is interesting. Michael Lessie is lined up on the far outside, and you would never in your right mind line up like that. But what's happening is that's where all the mules and the golf carts and the four-wheelers, I, I rode down through there earlier, Foot and that's getting packed. So it's a huge gamble, but... You know, he's, he's the kind of kid that likes to gamble. Then guarantee they've thought a lot about it, and then we'll see if it pays off. If it doesn't work, it's going to be a horrendous start. The track layout, same as it's been over the years. Uh, I'm not so sure about these wood chips. Sawdust is great. You know, it gets the track some loam, but there's bark out there that yeah, that's true. It's too big. There's enough rocks here already, and now they got more stuff flying around. I, I don't think the riders really like it. They've uh, let the promoters know. Hopefully next year they make a correction. And we look at the Honda starting grid. I had to correct myself. You're right. That is sawdust at, at Loretta. These are wood chips. No doubt about that. Big pieces of bark out there. There's <laughs> Ryan Villapoto. See his name. He gets to race against kids who he was racing amateurs with. Guys like Tommy Hahn just a few years ago. A lefty. I'm curious to see how this young kid does. I remember Brock Hepler, his first race, race out in top ten. We'll see. Uh, that was a couple of years ago. We'll see how Villapoto does here today. 125cc moto number one. You can see still a loose start on the inside. Ivan Tedesco shutting him down on the outside. Well, I guess it paid off for him. Mike Alessio on the KTM. Look at the mess outside the top five. Just like I said, looks like a mud race. They're going to be reaching for tear off, trying to see. Huge advantage for the riders up front. Alessio looked like he had the hold. Well, he earned it right there, pushing Tedesco out of the way. What a gamble, and it paid off. He's looking like a genius right now. They're starting to clear out on the outside and pulling the whole shot. Like Alessi, the Red Bull KTM factory pilot. Kawasaki's representative just behind the series points leader. Looks like that Josh Grant in third. I believe it was. Yep, it is Grant back in third place. Good roll. Oh, they're already begging part. But look at the standing water on the track. First race of the day. It's going to be tough for these guys. Also, tear-offs and roll-offs could be very critical these first few laps. You get a little water behind one, it's liable to spread out to all of them. And Alessi, it's just like the amateur rank. You know, this is a national, there's a lot more at stake right now, but he's just treating this like an amateur race, really. Just get the whole shot and check out. And, and look at this, Josh Grant, another rider he battled in the amateurs just a couple of years ago. All, already up to the front of the pack, Villapoto in his first national. So what we're starting to see is the beginning, the changing of the guards, Robbie. All these kids are for real. They're starting to prove it now. And I don't think that there's a lot of expectation on Villapoto, but judging by how fast he looked at that shot we showed you and, and the lap time, uh, he's going to pretty much 
be right in there doing what, what Josh and Alessi have been able to do. Mike Alessi is in third as that graphic pointed out. Not too far behind uh, Mike Brown. Only five points behind Alessi. Grant tied uh, fourth and fifth. It's Grant and Brown. And there's Grant looking good right now. And the Kawasaki contention right behind him. Those are uh, sparring partners for Ivan Tedesco, his teammate. So, you know, how, how important is that for the team Kawasaki to get up in there and maybe gain more points for Ivan Tedesco and, you know, kind of separate himself from the field? Well, uh, you know, with the points, I mean, he just keeps padding his knees. Mike Brown, I don't think we haven't even mentioned his name yet. Another bad start. Oh, oh wow. it's going down. What happened there? Just tuck the front end over. Josh Grant with that Amsoil Honda has oh, to refire. Hate that. You just hate that. You get a good start. You got your opportunity. The start Woo! so important today. And uh, there goes the man's man, Matt one, Walker. Yep, one mistake, and it puts you in mid pack or even further back. So a huge uh, mistake. It's going to cost Josh Grant big right there. You got the bike fired up. I mean, how surprised were you at that? I mean, that thing's fired up first kick. A four stroke, that, that usually does not happen. How impressed are you with Matt Walker right now? The 122 Pro Circuit Kawasaki working his way up. Yeah, he's at the point in his, uh, his silly season where he needs to get a ride. So, so he's, you know, he's without a ride not, right now. I'm not to say he doesn't always try hard, but when you're in that that uh, time frame of you know, the rest of your career, you, you reach a little deeper. And Watch what he's doing right now. See Josh Grant at the top of the screen. He gets a little bit off balance, dabs, gets too close to the hay bales, and just. That was a slow, speed deal, but it looked pretty horrendous. I'm glad he's okay. And all those stakes sticking up. I love the way the tracks look with all the banners. Look at that. Look at that. Going down again. Matt Walker, he just swapped out, and he floundered out there. a lot there. harder than it looks. It, it looks hard to be. What are you yeah, talking about? Got this mush out there that's sliding around the top, and underneath that, it's like ice. A lot of, it's, it's similar. I mean, we're only about an hour from Unadilla. The slippery, that flat rock receiving a nice loam. It's not as tacky as it looks. Matt just found a slick spot, got off balance. But, you know, look at all these, uh, these wooden stakes that hold these banners up. I mean, Josh is lucky, Josh Grant that is, that he didn't, you know, just impale himself on one of those things. I love the way that makes the track look, but I, I wish those things were a bit more forgiving, just in case. Ryan Mills, number 37. This is, I guess this is home track, would you say? I mean, New York kid out there looking good right now in third. Holding he's got off. Southwick, he's got, you know, I don't know, he's, <laughs> he's got, got a lot of home tracks. We, uh, Riding well, though. Yeah, I mean, yeah. look at Larry Brooks has to be uh, smiling pretty big at the moment. KTM running first and third. All right, watch Walker right here. 122, the green bike in the middle. I mean, he just gets too far outside. Uh oh, that, that really did him in right there. Yeah. It's, Pull it's his foot off. One of those crashes where you're like, oh, man. Why? Can I get a do-over? That was dumb. And both guys we see go down, lost a foot. And, and, you know, Grant had his foot pull off. He swapped around. That happened there with Walker. That's just, uh, you know, balance. Just throwing anything out there to help you keep your balance. They don't need motors. It wasn't enough. They don't you need know, motors. Lessie. You see doors. Got to hand it to Alessi for, for taking the gamble, getting the whole shot. You can see fine. He's still clean. And, you know, it wasn't like he just got a good start. And, you know, he's a benefactor of that. Look at the lead. He's got good lines, delivering the power smooth, and good ride is fantastic right now. If it wasn't for that uh, no points, take him over to a Southwick, he'd be up there in the championship. We'll see if Mike Gillespie can stay that way. He leads Tedesco and Mills. A wet, sloppy track in photo number one of the 125cc class, although most guys are on 250F. You're looking at Ryan Mills back in third, that race for second. Kawasaki just in front of him, Ivan Tedesco, our series points leader right now, trying to win his first ever AMA Motocross Championship. Already holds titles at 125 West Coast Supercross, but Motocross, a whole different world, a longer season for him, and really impressive this year. But I'm impressed by Ryan Mills right now, really put pressure on our series points leader. Yep, it's tough. Mills, it's tough to read him, you know? He's either nowhere or... You know, you feel like, was, was Mills racing today? You know, one of those, or he's putting in a performance like this. So it kind of goes to show how important the start is and, and uh, keeping your head in it regardless. He's, he's, so far, he's riding well. And, you know, it probably helps that his teammates been riding well. Chances are they've been sharing ideas with lines and such. I know Larry Brooks is uh, pretty thorough as a team manager, and being a team manager that used to be a racer, uh, nothing falls through the cracks over there. 
know Larry's uh, definitely sitting the boys down. Talking about that, the Red Bull KTM first and third. We're not seeing Michael Lessie right now because he has checked out of photo number one. Good race, though, for second. Ryan Mills from New York misses uh -oh. the gear, and the bike just stalls, drops out, loses the chain. Uh, I'd say chain, huh? No, I don't think that's a chain. He looked down over that side. He, he right did. He was just fighting with himself. Nonetheless, that's one of the best races. Even though he won a moto this year, that was one of the best races we've seen him in all year long. This is like nice the to worst work. feeling, Bobby, when you got a good moto going, and then that happens. Now, whatever it is, it's a bike deal, and you can see he's just going, ah! Why me? You know? Well, you, you, when do you get that opportunity again? You got to get back out there and, and try to get the start. But when you don't get a good finish in the first moto, your kick to the gate is horrible. He's going to be 30-something kick. Something. Is that a word? <laughs> you know what I mean. Yes. He'll be in the 30s when he, when he lines up at the gate for the second moto. And, and uh, his chance of getting a start. I mean, he, he can see it. He can see the frustration. It's really too bad. Did you, uh, Hopefully that doesn't happen, doesn't happen to Mike. No, we talked about his victory. Second moto at Red Bud. He was able to take that victory. But again, he's either really on or really, really off right now. Ryan Mills is 18th in points. No, he was it, riding wild. That was a mechanical thing right there. There's Ivan Tedesco. His teammate... Grant Langston not too far by coming up short right there. Look, he's pulling for a, or going for a roll off. And Grant Langston, you're talking about on again or off again. I mean, he'll win one photo with DNF the next, or you know, finish second, and then you know, crash his way into whatever. I mean, he's currently in third right now, but I, I, I've never seen anything like this. Well. You know, in contrast to that, Tedesco hasn't been outside the top ten in a, in a single moto all year long. And so that's, you know, he realizes the name of the game is consistency, and he has had great performances when he's needed them. He hasn't been really uh, that fast here this weekend. Maybe he doesn't like this place, or I don't know. You know, there's, there's uh, be a million things going on. But, you know, he's in a good position here right now, but uh, Langston's all over him. And Langston, he's just trying to put together a solid performance. If the title's gone, so the only thing worth it for him is to go out and try to win moto. I don't think there's any team tactics going on right here, obviously, because he just went by. There goes teammate, and Grant Langston sits in sixth place, 247 points. A benefit to the Kawasaki team. I mean, look at Tedesco, Langston, Walker. I mean, a lot of Kawasaki's in the front. Yeah, he's happy about it, even happier that Andrew Short is back there, unable to make a move so far. One more lap is complete. You see just how rough it is. You see the difference, how far you have the option of jumping out. Airbase, what do you have for us? Well, we just saw Grant Langston pass his teammate Ivan Tedesco, and I spoke with Mitch Payton, the team manager, earlier on this afternoon regarding team tactics at this point of the season. He stated that we don't try to discuss those things as of right now. We're going to wait. We can to get the jinx to talk about it, but when it comes down to it, racing is racing. If it so happens to be at the very last race, then yes, it will be discussed. But as of right now, that's considered a bit of a jinx, so he didn't want to discuss it. And racing's racing, and we're going to see what happens here in this photo. Basically, Tedesco has such a big lead right now that it's just not really necessary to discuss it. And also, you know, there's a lot of superstitions going around here. You just don't want to start talking about what's going to happen until it's happening. And right now, everything's just working, so it doesn't need to get discussed. Working for Mike Alessi on that Red Bull KTM. Got the whole shot on that far outside like you talked about, David Bailey. Series points leader back in third with Grant Langston sitting in second right now. Another note of mention, Jason Lawrence back in sixth spot. Good job for the Suzuki rider trying to get inside that top five. And our Parts Unlimited flashback here at Broom Taoga. It was 1986. We had 500s and 125s racing that day. You won the 500s, by the way, David Bailey. And you remember the 125 race? Eddie Warren with a great hole shot. But look at some of these these names. I mean, the flashbacks. George Holland, number 11 on the Suzuki. It was, it was Cooper out front early on, but then this three-way battle for the lead shaped up. Number 11, George Holland. 23, Eddie Warren from the Michigan Mafia. Another Michigander, Keith Bowen. Yep, and Keith Bowen, a heck of a mud rider. And in the second moto, he would get his switch. First moto, perfect condition. Nice and dry. That's perfect. Yeah, it was it was perfect. For Broom Tioga, that's that's what you want. Nice <laughs> good loam and ruts. But the second moto, this was the scene. Tough to keep a pair of goggles on and without trans transponders, very difficult to score. Actually in my 500 moto right after this, they 
threw the white flag right after the halfway because it was impossible to, to continue. Eddie Warren, who shined in the mud in that second moto and picked up the overall win. Won the championship that year, Mickey Diamond, but uh, his day in the basking in the rain. Eddie Warren from Michigan, now present day. The Hopes for Team Green Kawasaki now. Ryan Villapoto looking pretty good. I mean, he's muddy just like, you know, that year in 86. He's currently in 12th. Pretty impressive, though. Top 12, your first race out. Yeah, not bad. I, I'm impressed with his aggression. He's a little bit all over the place, but <laughs> back sort of uh, still takes that. And I like the fact that he's just charged. He doesn't look tentative at all in his first national. And seems to be enjoying himself out there. And what really impressed me was this morning is when it was really muddy, right after that downpour, he went out in the first qualifier, hole shot it, and uh, pulled away from Kelly Smith, who's an incredible mud rider. So, uh, I until the photo, he's starting off pretty good. Right. Took the pass. Grant likes it over Ivan Tedesco, going into that whoop set. It set it up coming down the outside. He jumped down that step down and, and squared him off, and then running the left side down this rhythm super cross section, whatever you want to call it, seemed to pay off because, kind of like Millville, you didn't really have to make the pass. As long as you're on the inside, you had the block pass in the corner at the end. That's what, that's what happened. Tedesco pretty much had to back off right there. Most supercross of the course, and then the, the be, probably the best supercross 25 rider out there got passed on. So. Yeah. Go figure. Now you see everybody. Look at that rhythm, though. I mean, you, you've got to find. You lose rhythm there. I mean, you're done for. I mean, you're not talking half a second difference. You're talking about a full second difference. Or even yeah, the, the rest of the straightaway is, is pretty messed up if you, you mess up your rhythm early on. And you know what was happening was. They weren't able to jump it early in the race because it was slippery and slimy, a little bit risky. And then as it started to tack up halfway through the moto, riders started jumping it. They're getting more traction than they meant to, and a lot of guys were over jumping it during their time. How about this? Brock Heffler working his way up through the pack. I mean, he just jumped way out. We saw Langston do that once he got by Ivan Tedesco, but Brock Heffler, horrible on that first lap. He is just charging through the field. He's definitely the fastest guy out there. That was a good move. Gets by. That was a really good move. Gets by a short. I mean, this short coming off of his first victory. I mean, he has all the confidence in the world. And you got a Suzuki just blew your doors off. Yeah, you got to realize that, uh, you know, they, they've come from different parts of the country. And Brock Hepler is an East Coast kid who's ridden in plenty of mud. A little bit more comfortable in it. And it shows right now. Hepler definitely looks fast. You see him not back off that back end. Still trying to hunt through there. It's going to get better for the second moto, but right now it's muddy, sloppy, taking a really different outside line, though. But look at this, Dave. Now, watch Hepler set this up. He stays close enough, first of all, to take advantage of any mistake that Andrew might make. But he, he gets in there and forces Andrew to charge down in that corner hard, team lock it up a little bit, searching for a line, and Hepler just cuts right across the inside and takes the line away. That was a case of defensive right. It riding. doesn't make contact. Last time these guys got together, I can think of, was the Bud Street. And that, was, that was pretty ugly. But right there, yeah, it's nice to see them uh, going back and forth and not touching. And as we went to replay, Ivan Tedesco goes down. Now he has Kelly Smith on that boost mobile Yamaha just behind him. Went down over there. He, he was in the top three, but now it's a battle for seventh place. That does hurt in the championship uh, scope of things. And, you know, he's quite worried about the championship and the team tactics and all that. And you just get the job done. You, know, you can race for every position and make a few mistakes as possible. Woo! Look at that. Popped up. But did you see Grant Langston looking behind him instead of what's in front of him? Well, he, he could tell what was coming and he was trying to figure out, okay, is he going to square me off? How tight do I need to hold this corner? And he typically don't want to look back to do that. But, but uh, maybe he wasn't sure who it was or whatever and needed to know how he should take that corner. Hepler, on the other hand, he was excited. He's like, oh boy, oh boy, here we go. Here's my line again. And he messed it up. Oh, goody, goody, goody. Look what I got from You know, when uh, Langston looking back, I, I covered cycling at the Olympics. I've never seen a sport where you look behind yourself more than in front in track cycling. They're it, always looking behind. But I think that was right. He's saying, all right, is this some wing nut behind me trying to charge hard? Trying to race with the champ or what? But that's definitely the case. Hey, you know what? Gillespie has a huge lead. The kid is, he's on fire today. Carmichael you know, the, the start, yeah, a, a, lot, a lot like that. The start was a gamble, he got it. I mean, we talked about how fantastic his starts have, can be. He's, he hasn't gotten a lot of them, but he got it today, and he rode flawless after that. One for his second win. overall of the of the year. Mike Gillespie, the Red Bull KTM, has victory, moto number one. 
back to Broome Tioga. Michael Lessey with a victory, his third moto victory of the season. One at Mount Morris, also at Southwick. And now here, now we talk to him. Well, now making it his third moto win of the season. It's not hard to tell, but he's 100% back. A healthy Mike, congratulations, getting the whole shot, checking right out from there. Yeah, everything went real good. Got the second place hole shot behind Ivan. Got Ivan real quickly and uh, just wanted to check out, and that's what I did. You know, uh, I want this championship real bad. And, you know, want's a pretty big word, and, uh, and I want this championship, and I'm trying to pull out everything on the last few races. And hopefully it pans out. If not, then uh, there's always next year. We made up some points here as we take a look at the Suzuki results. Alessi, Langston, Hepler, Short, and Jason Lawrence does move inside the top five. Josh Grant goes down and still works his way into a sixth place finish. Ryan Villapoto, the rookie in 14th. Let's talk to his teammate, Grant Langston. Just kind of edged my way forward, and I'm uh, two laps I made so many mistakes. I heard Brock behind me, and I thought, no, I want to get, I don't want to let him by, and I kind of just put the hammer down on the last few laps, and I let him off, so it's pretty good. Well, he's definitely had some highs and lows so far this season. Brock, once again, starting from mid-pack, charging all the way back. How are you able to do it, always from mid-pack? Well, you know, I, I train really hard, and, you know, when it's hot like this and the mud's really heavy, uh, it really wears you out. So, you know, that's where I really try to shine is at the end of the motos. And, you know, uh, you know, I didn't get up the first, but I was really charging. Running all those muddy hills in Pennsylvania on that Cerny Suzuki really paid off for Brock. And nobody does more to protect your right to ride than the American Motorcyclists Association. Every racer on the track is an AMA member. How about you? Call 1-800-AMA-JOIN or visit amadirectly.com. The AMA rights riding racing and now between the motos with dr g tim ferry was the very first motocross athlete that i worked with he started inviting me to go to some of the races and eventually i started to blossom in with a couple other relationships you know started working with kevin windham and ezra when they were back at honda and uh, started working with a numerous amount of uh, 250 riders and then recently just started going back into the 125 ranks uh, i've been working with ivan tedesco and uh, it's been a great pleasure yeah well when you you know take a toll on your body and you got to come in here and get straightened out luckily i found a good guy he came up to me last year before he won the championship and said hey dr g what's it going to take for me to work with you and i said you couldn't afford me uh, and uh, he said, it doesn't matter, I want to win. Ivan and I have been working together ever since. It's been a good relationship for both of us, I think. It always makes me look good when he's winning, too. Everybody wants to know what the champion's doing. It's not a secret, but um, obviously we want Ivan to have um, the advantage as much as he can. Hitting the jumps and stuff, it, it tweaks your neck a little bit. You know, if it, as long as you don't hit the ground, when you hit the ground, everything hurts. So when you're at our level, uh, every little thing counts. And to have somebody on my side like that to work on me every day, it, it really helps. G's part of my program now, and, and I don't think I could really do it without him. The elite athletes will go to the elite means to get any advantage they can over, over their competition. Not only am I a doctor to all these motocross stars, but I have to admit I am a huge fan. So uh, I've kind of started my own little collection of, uh, of jerseys here. Um, a couple of years ago, um, when I was working with Ezra Lusk, I was fortunate enough to work with uh, James Stewart. And this is the old Bubblicious jersey that he, that he signed. This is one of my favorite jerseys. Mike Brown, Laker, big Laker fan. One of my all-time favorite riders, Yo, Ezra Lusk. This is back in the Kawasaki days. Bowleman back in his 934 days, you know, came in here. And I've just been really blessed to be able to have worked on quite a few people. Um, we collect the jerseys. I'm the biggest motocross fan of all. Um, I try to hide it a little bit, but uh, deep down inside, when that gate goes down and those guys are going for the first turn, I'm up on the edge of my seat just like everybody else. It makes all the difference, Robbie. These guys all need that kind of uh, adjustment. And when I did the Ironman, there's no way in the world I could have recovered without that kind of person in my corner. Stay with us. Moto number two is next. About to get things underway with moto number two, the 125cc class here at Broome Tioga. Stop number 10 of 12 of this AMA Motocross Championship. Ivan Tedesco, the series points leader, lost 11 points to Mike Alessi. That seventh place did bid him well. Right now, he's with Aaron Bates. From the second to the sixth round, Mike had the points lead. You're kind of in the same situation right now. You've got the points lead. How do you prevent what's happened to him from happening to you? I don't know. I guess not, not what happened last moto, I guess. You know, just try and stay up front and 
and uh, hopefully I can do that this moto. And what are you doing differently this moto? Stay off the ground. Keep her on two wheels, right? Yeah, I hope so. Good luck. Thanks. Now, he's starting on the outside where Michael Lessie is starting all the way on the inside. And that's our Honda starting grid. You saw Lessie with that first pick up the gate. Langston with second. Now, why would that be, David Bailey? Uh, just this particular moto, if I were Michael Lessie and had first pick to the gate, I'd go to the far inside. And, you know, it, I don't think he had first pick before and he took a gamble and it worked. But now the, the track has dried up some. and. I think it's an advantage to be clear out there. Go inside, push them wide. You're right, the track is much better for photo number two, and you see a good start by Alessi, and this time it's the green machine on the outside going by. Yeah, you can see Tedesco shoot across, so that, I don't know. This is the inverse of photo number one. Exact same thing happened. Who was on that outside? Whoa. But this time, it's, well, just like in photo number one, the guy who was inside come out. In the same this spot, it was Alessi getting around Tedesco, and Tedesco's got to figure out this hill coming into this right-hander, and then Hepler is right there with those guys this time. He was fast the first moto. Now he's got to look at the lead. Oh, yeah. Did you see that? Tedesco making a bobble, but Hepler jumped his way into second without the mistake of Ivan Tedesco. Yeah, Hepler will, he's going to apply the pressure to Alessi right now and force him to ride these first couple of laps perfect. Like, you can just see from the aggression in that first it just, you know, a few hundred yards. Hepler means oh, oh Alessi man. almost going down. Landon Luck, he needs to go down right there. How did he day. save that? Luck, strength, and just desire to stay on two wheels. We saw a lot of people over jumping that section, but look like he jumped just off of the track a little bit, landed in some soft stuff. You know, he would probably be in this championship. Which event was that? The, the round he over jumped and separated his shoulder South. early on in the year. It sounded like he was out in front, just pretty much like that. Yeah. Uh, that's a hard impact. I never really like that jump. <laughs> it, it, Neither does it, the left. You have to do it perfect, and it's, it's sketchy when you're in traffic. He's lucky he didn't have somebody ride on his tail that he crashed into him from there. He, that's why he looked back. A lot of horsepower going up that hill, and it, heck, I don't even know if there is a favor. We know the KTM's are fast, but especially the lightweight Michael Lassie on top of it. Would you say that's probably the fastest bike on the track at any given time, or do you probably, think that Cowboys have more testing? I think on the showroom floor, it's one of the fastest. And, you know, they've worked on probably two cents and got even more out of it. But, you know, Mike is really good at delivering that power. I mean, if you ever get a chance to watch him in these races live, when he comes by, you can barely even hear it. Because he rides the bike in a taller gear where, the, where the, those kinds of engines make better power. Um, he's really disciplined to make sure that he shifts at the right time, and he, he rolls the power on really nice. So, you know, whatever power is that, that bike's putting out, he's getting all of it. Mike Lessie, only 17 years old. It's his first full season as the AMA Motocross professional. Rode a couple of events last year. Did well. You know, podium in his, his second tryout. Now we're seeing the number three, Mike Brown, who was in the championship hunt, but has dropped all the way back to fourth coming into this event. And it went too long ago. Here's our serious points lead. Yeah, bad start. It was just a string of those. And, uh, Losing a little confidence in his engine at a, a couple of points where he pulled off. And I don't know all the reasons for that, but, you know, these things have a tendency to lock up sometimes. What if it did it off that jump right there? And I don't think, you know, Mike's been around long enough to hear the motor and know what's going on in there and not, he's not willing to take a chance at his age and, uh, you know, get hurt back. So it, it's been tough for him lately. And with the motor across the nation's all stuff brewing and him not performing well, it's, he's feeling a lot of pressure right now. But it's good to see him get a good start finally. Brownie, the rider number three, former national champion in the 125cc class. For those of you new to motocross, a single-digit number guarantees that that was a former champion. You see Grant Langston with that number eight. Uh, they back-to-back years, I believe, for the two riders them winning the 125 championship, pulling off a tear off there. But you know, that's the epitome to have that single-digit number keeping each year. You know, you're known as that number out there. Brownie, you think of three, I, th I think of him. I, Jeff Ward's no longer, you know, up there. But, you know, that's the goal. What do you think of when he's taking number four? <laughs> I'd have to say Carmichael. I don't know. <laughs> you know, with, with what Carmichael's been able to do to switch to the 250 class, since you're talking about numbers, I mean, I've heard some people talking about maybe we should just retire that number when Ricky retires. I you know, they've never done that in the sport of motocross. But 
to make sense in his case. He's and been he, so successful in the sport. And he was one of the first guys, too. I remember when I, I got to talk to him, when he had the motocross and supercross championship, he could have kept the number one on his bike. He chose not to do so. He never ran that number one except for, you know, that last race on the Honda last year. Uh, he's been good to him, so he figured, you know, he liked the way it looked on the bike, and it was a merchandising thing, and some advice from his sponsors, and decided to stick with it, and it served him well. And he's short, losing a strap on his chest protector, and sometimes that gets on your nerves. I don't think it's bothering him right now. He's just going point, point, He point. also lost second in point, too, with that win by Michael Les. He vaulted him two points ahead of Andrew Short, so in the point chase, it's Tedesco, Alessi, and now short you see the 51 charging hard he's in the top 10 barely he's an eight now it's time for a suzuki riding tip and we find suzuki's best rider and david you get to talk about it well you know this is about breaking bumps sometimes you just can't miss them and what you don't want to do is have it mess you up so that you can't get around the berm mount. Now take a look at how ricky just relaxes and lets the bike just kick around underneath him it doesn't let it affect his momentum Still makes contact with the burn with good balance so he can get into that rhythm section without losing his timing. You've got to get comfortable with letting the bike bounce around. You can practice nose wheelies if it's what it takes to get more comfortable. But the key is not to try to miss him all the time because you spend so much time looking for a good line, it's actually slower. Go right through those things, let the bike hop, keep your eye on the burn make contact without letting those braking bumps slow you down. That's your Suzuki riding tip. We're back live at Broome Tioga. Not only do the, the rider have to be dialed in, but also bike set up very important for that same yeah, thing. You know, I even couldn't if, do that, David. Even if the bike still kicks around a little bit more, I mean, there were times where I'd let my back wheel hit a braking bump, and I'd purposely let it nose me a little farther so I wouldn't hit the next bump. Some people may be wondering what the heck that is on the top of Andrew Short's head. It's uh, in case of those muddy conditions. Got a little piece of foam up there. Nice. Yeah, he yeah. learned. Brock Kepler taught him a lesson in the first moto, and he used it on Langston in the second moto. That was sweet. Look at the aggression from, from Andrew Short right now. He's taking championship. I, I want to keep in the run and need some points, and uh, you know he's got to get around Langston to pick up a couple more, and he does. Another guy looking for championship points is Mike Brown, the number three. And what has happened to Brown in his past? I don't know, month and a half. Josh Grant just in front of him, but I have lost a ton of points. David, what, what is the one thing you think it is with Brown that has is, been is his touch in these past, say, six weeks? Uh, just from my standpoint, looking at it, it's been, I'm not looking at him just, you know, in particular, but it's kind of uh, just an overview of it all. I don't think he's getting the starts he needs, and when you're not getting the starts you need that many times, then I start to question the power. Has it that he was not happy with the power up to Millville and, and uh, did something about it? And uh, it looks like he got the start he needed this moto. So, whatever it was going on with the engine, they got it sorted out. Jim's motorcycle Honda is doing good, trying to gain those valuable championship points. You see Brock Hepler, you see Mike Lessie not too far behind that first and second place, respectively. The factory Suzuki, the team Makita Suzuki, just in front of that Red Bull KTM. Two young guys. These are the stars of the 125 class. We expect them to be the stars of the 250 class in the not so you know, distant future. Eventually. You know, with, with the lefty, uh, during one of the weeks that we had off in the series, he came up here to Binghamton and rode a local race. So, you know, I talked about how much he prepares. He was ready for this racetrack, and it shows today. Look at There's Andrew goes, okay, well, I can't get you here. So he squares it back and gives himself that opportunity. Hit the sperm early and just dart out of it, cut straight across the corner and catch Langston kind of going, oh, man, where'd you come from? <laughs> Great move. Watch it now. No, it didn't touch him either. You know, if Langston can't be upset with that. He can only be upset with himself for allowing it to happen. Now, Kelly Smith still in the battle, and again, we see Grant Langston. Saw that pass at you know, the same place that happened to him a little earlier, but the track's definitely drying out. You're not seeing the, the slop we saw earlier as well. Pretty fast lap time, 222 as well. Definitely picking it up in pace. Right, and guess what? Kelly Smith must be running a 222 as well. He's been up there all day long. He's can start, ride well. And I'm pretty sure, I'm not positive, don't quote me on this, but I think he's been second overall here before. So he, he agrees with this track, and as soon as it rained this morning, he was like, all right, I'm going to do good today. <laughs> Wide open. One overall victory to his credit. That was in the rain at Mount Morris. And, and you're right, he does like this track. It's looking good, but Grant Langston, looks like he's starting to get things dialed in again as well. Not too far behind the number eight on that couch. 
you know, you, you wouldn't believe it. See all the people here? Pretty nice crowd on hand. That rain came down this morning. You couldn't find anybody. I was like, where'd they all go? Yeah, yeah. They're gone. Yeah, they disappeared. I was thinking, ah, oh, the motors are hating it right now. It's going to hurt the crowd. The track's going to be lousy. And it actually turned out to be a pretty good day. And the track is it's gnarly. It's rough, rutted, slick. And it's probably one of the most technical tracks we've had of the year. That, that sounded very surferish. Yeah, I mean, I that was gnarly. Couldn't think of a better word. That was a great adjective. Great edges. There, there's Grant Langston, aggressive. He's going to be on the outside coming up this hill. Look at him on the throttle. Now what are they going to do? Woo! Slingshot and gets by. Takes over position. It's looking like the 250 race that we saw between Carmichael and James Stewart that time. Uh, he's like, hey, man, Short did that to me a little while ago. I got <laughs> to balance this back out. He picked up another spot. Kelly's still riding well, but Langston just bit more aggressive right now. Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki's moved up. Kelly Smith draws back to eighth place. Let's go back down to the pits with Aaron Bates. Well, guys, I was telling up Moto Wins down here, and as it sits right now, Brock Kepler has got the most Moto Wins so far this season. As it sits, he's got four Moto Wins right now. If he keeps it on two wheels for the remainder of Moto Number Two, it will make five Moto Wins. That's the most wins out of anybody this season. Everybody else in the game has got no more than three Moto Wins. Hopefully, he'll be able to keep it on two wheels and keep this streak going. A friend of mine I used to train with, and I did the Boston Marathon a few times, he said, Dave, it's not the guy that's fastest, it's the guy that slows down the lead. Well, he's been fast, but he had some bad motos that kept him out of the championship shot at James. I like that. I was the guy that slowed down the most. 30 minutes plus two laps, that's how long the AMA Motocross Championships are. We're at Broome Tioga. It's the border of Pennsylvania and New York State. We're looking at Davey Millsap, factory Suzuki, and another Suzuki, although not factory, of Jason Lawrence. Lawrence had a good motor one. I, I've heard very little of Davey Millsap in his AMA Motocross Championship season. Why is that when he was so fast in Supercross? I'm hearing a lot more about Jason Lawrence. I think it's a number of things. One is he's too heavy. Two is he's signed with factory Honda. Three is he started off lousy at Hangtown and just kind of ruined his enthusiasm for the series. I don't know. Just throwing it out there. I you asked me. I asked uh, you. I want your thoughts. You see, you, yeah, he's just writing like a days for right yeah, now. When you blow it early in the season, it, your, uh, your motivation starts to slip a little bit. You, you got to fight back. And you just didn't. Then why is Grant Langston so motivated? Because he, he, you know, he just blows by Kelly Smith in a very aggressive pass. I He's think we've all established that Langston has the heart of a lion. That might be the difference. You know, Davey's still a kid. He's still learning. He's still trying to figure out the balance between fun and intense and, and uh, all the training and everything that it takes to go into it. Philip Poto will learn that in the next few years. And, you know, I, I don't think it's time to be counting Millsaps out. He's just had an off season. And, Probably looking really forward to next season. Ryan Seitz is just going by having a lousy day. He got knocked down the first lap in the first moto and his third from last in this moto off the start. So if you don't get the start, you can't hang out up there where uh, you know the riders you believe you should be battling with. It's, it's tough in this class with all the depth to work your way through. 2.22.5 for Villapoto. Some of our leaders, that was, that was very comparable to their lap times as well. So Villapoto, the next in line of the Team Green lineage. Yeah, I mean, here we are outside the top 10 turning fast laps. That's what I'm saying. The 250 class, you got Ricky, Kevin, James, if he's there, and then it, it drops off three to four seconds a lap, and then it's just, uh, it's all weak, in my opinion. The 125 class is much more intense for the 250. It looks to get, get even better as the years progress from the last lap of this 125cc class. Brock Kepler, 15 laps left. Well, that's a darn good thing, because it looks like, oh, there are only going to be 15 laps in this race. Looks like he may be out of it for the championship. Seventh place coming into this, but he, he's trying to prove to everyone that he is the fastest in the 125cc class. He's definitely proven it here in Moto number two. And it's a bummer not to have the championship in your grasp, but it sure feels good to win motos like this. And, you know, it's just signs that he's going to be there eventually. The Honda highlight has to be the start, you know, start things off. Look at Tedesco, and then zing, there goes Michael Lewis. And the second moto was the exact opposite of that. Look at Mike make that pass. Bam! Just Tedesco left him a little bit of room, and he's a little kid, but he's not afraid to get in there and bang bars. Now, unless he gets the whole shot, it looks like. Watch. Zing! Zing. <laughs> Tedesco that time, a complete reversal. Yeah. 
Man, that, yeah, that looked like deja vu all over Now look at Mike, lands a little bit too wide and then Mock, lucky didn't go over the handlebars and that somebody wasn't close enough to plow into the back. Our Suzuki results have a Suzuki out in front, taking the win in moto number two. Davey Millsaps finished in 11th spot. Jason Lawrence after a top 10 in moto one, finishes 13th in moto number two. Now let's go down to Ivan Tedesco. Hey, I've seen you ride every single weekend. You're an aggressive rider as well. It looks as though you're kind of content. You're in the points lead right now. You want to keep it cool and keep it on two wheels and just keep that championships under wraps. Yeah, I'm trying not to ride like that, but it's kind of hard, you know, with the championship in the back of your mind. you got a big points lead, and I think anybody in that position would... It's, it's hard to do. I've been in that position before in Supercross, and I'm trying not to do that. I think I rode pretty good that moto, and hopefully I can keep it going. Great to see you back up here. Thanks a lot. Well, the Scott Goggles stayed clean, did they? That was nice, bright green there. Alessi Hepler short as we look at the overalls here. And Mike Alessi takes another victory, his second of the year. Grant Langston and Ivan Tedesco round out the top five overalls. Now let's go back down to the podium and Andrew Short. I tried my best. First moto, I was a little off, and the second moto, I came from behind. So that was a good feeling to kind of redeem myself, but it was a tough day compared to last week. Yeah, 1-1 one, one at the last stop. Not as good this time, but he moves to second in points, 317 to 366. Tedesco could wrap up the championship at the next stop in Pennsylvania. Speaking of Pennsylvania, B-Rock Hepler, that's where he's from, and he takes the moto win. This now makes five moto wins for you. That's the most wins in this 125 class. How are you able to pull that together? Oh, well, I think it's just our team. You know, they're really supportive, and they try to make changes that I need uh, and want. So, uh, you know, we're not in the best place in the points, but we, I guess we are winning the most motos. So we'll just have to keep winning and hope for next year. I noticed that you and Larry Brooks once again got in a shoving match right on the starting gate. This technique's getting you roared right up and ready to go. Is that is that what's making you mad out there? Yeah, just get me pumped up for the start gate, and it, it works out great. You know, uh, I had a great day today. I went one two. You know, uh, second moto, I got the whole sh got second place start. You know, Ivan used the same technique <coughs> that I did on him in the first moto. I got around him quick, and then on um, the first lap, I landed right in a big soft pot of mud. I just stopped, and Brock got right by me, but. Uh, you know, I, I knew a 1-2 would be a 3-1, so I just played it safe, got the overall, and it feels so good. Mathematics worked out for him that time. Did you see Larry Brooks taking him like a rag doll? I like that. You no, know, it works in football. It's all about getting your mind in the right place. And he is in the proper state of mind. As goofy as that may look to us, it works. For David Bailey and Aaron Bates, I'm Robbie Floyd. We will see you at Steel City.